It's nature. Dial 7 now. To accept this call, press 5 now. To decline this call, hang up. Well, hello there, Miss Ham. Ah, yes, yes. We are so proud of the voters in this county. No new jails. I know, I know, right? Yeah. Uh, it's just, there are better ways to handle crime than to just lock everybody up without question. And that that is true because it, when you're when you're forced to find alternative means, you'll come up with a good solution. And it's a shame people have to do that. You know, you have this popular artist, Taylor Swift. She gets into a relationship, things go bad, she writes a song, it becomes a hit. Because she's emotionally connected to the song. The more relationships she has, the better off. If she gets married then, you know, maybe a tough time in her marriage, she can write a song, but that will rarely happen. But bouncing around from boyfriend to boyfriend is beautiful for her. It works out great. Because she writes from the heart. She writes what's, what she's feeling. <clears throat> and she's uh, encouraged by life events. And we can learn from that in our government because if the people say we don't want a new jail and the jail is filling up what's it tell you look at the number of criminals that's in there are most of them addicted to drugs because locking a person up isn't going to get a person off of drugs no matter how hard you try it's not going to work but putting them in a treatment program Maybe, but I think the best bet is just to talk with the person, work with the person on an individual basis, <clears throat> because the issue isn't going to go away, ever. It has been around for centuries, and it's going to continue to be around. We have alcohol that caused a lot of problems. We have fentanyl, marijuana, cocaine anything that distorts human rationale can be an issue even health you know if a man is driving a car and he has a heart attack and crashes into a house and kills two people why lock him in prison you know other people wouldn't even think twice about that but if a person is so depressed so miserable in their life that drugs seems to be the only alternative, illegal drugs, and this person just gets addicted to them and can't stop. It's not that the person gets up one morning and says, you know what, I want drugs to control my life. Most of the people who are addicted to drugs don't want that. So if this person gets into this rut, we lock them up. Yeah, that's going to help. I know of intricate systems within the prison that can provide drugs to anybody. Well, yeah, yeah, see, you have first-hand knowledge. If you want a bar of soap or if you want uh, a little sample of vodka, and even if you want fentanyl, you can get it there in prison. And I don't know why you have the, 60 seconds remaining. the American public thinks that if we ban something, it's, it's not accessible to people. There's a way. And an addiction will, will definitely give people that motivation to fight it. Well, good. You keep preaching that in and that's what, that's what they need to hear. It's just that we can do more when you get out. And you let people know how easy it is to get drugs. How you have thirty seconds remaining won't help. And I think maybe he's gonna listen. We gotten to the point now where the things that we've been doing don't work, so I'm sure they'll be open for suggestions. Yeah, town hall. That's a good place to start these things. Well, good. 
Good. I'm glad your uh, your family's on board. So we'll do our part. Oh, definitely. And if you want to get your word out, just let me know. And Thank you for using Inmate Call. Goodbye. Hello, welcome to AQS Inmate Call, and I am your host, Joel Wilborn. And in this issue, I want to talk about problems and how we solve problems. Now, one thing I have noticed when I communicate with incarcerated people, I'm not really interested in why they committed a crime or the crimes that they committed or even an explanation of it. A lot of them will give that to me voluntarily, but that's not why I want to communicate with them. I just want to let them know that there's somebody out here who cares, who wants to listen to them, who wants to give some feedback, who wants to help them resolve issues. That's my big thing. These are human beings just like my neighbor, just like me. And they deserve to be treated like human beings, and that's what I want. They're my friends, and I'm going to treat them as a friend. And the world can think whatever they want. They can think what they want about me. They can think about what they want about them. But it doesn't help reduce crime by criticizing people and ignoring them and running away from the issue. What will resolve it is listening to the folks and working with them. Finding out on an individual basis. We can group everybody together. We can say all murderers fall under this category. All rapists fall under this category. All drug addicts fall under this category. No. That has never worked, it never will work, but for some reason people think that it will and they're going to keep investing in it, wasting their time, wasting their money. I want the people to get out of prison and never go back. Not go back one more time, two more times, never. And I don't think it's an impossible goal. I've seen the results. I know the system works. And if I can keep one person out of prison, I'm a success. And it's really not that hard to do. If we find somebody out on the street, and let's say this person has a long rap sheet. What's on that rap sheet? Is this person being arrested for distribution of drugs, uh, driving while intoxicated, domestic violence? What's going on? <clears throat> Why is the person going through all of this? What can we do to put an end to this spree? To just stop it from happening again? And rehabilitation is nice. But, you know, like I heard on one of these talk shows, you're taking a bunch of addicts and putting them in a room with a bunch of addicts to describe what got them into that mess in the first place and how they're going to get out of it. A lot of them will get together after the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting and have a drink. And narcotics, it, it, it's an addiction. It's a medical issue that needs medical attention. And... You know, if I'm addicted to drugs and I sit down with other people that's addicted to drugs, there's a good chance I'm going to keep going to do drugs. The people I talk to, a lot of them want to get out of prison and go to a different city. They don't want to live in the city where they can easily get drugs or where their friends are using drugs and will influence them. They know their weakness. They overcome it by taking off to a different city. I've seen that work. And I'm working with a person now who's going to be getting out, putting in a request to go to a different city, <clears throat> and coming here to my city. And I've been asked by her girlfriend to help her. And I will. I will talk to her. I will listen to her. And I will offer my support. The only person who can keep her out of prison is her. I can't do it. Laws can't do it. And threats... And mobs aren't going to do it. You know, people aren't going to say, I'm addicted to this drug, I'm going to stop because if I go out and do that, I'll get beat up by my neighbors. It just, <laughs> that doesn't work. And when we sit around and we think, why did this person commit a crime? If in our mind, we grow up in a fairly stable household, 
we have uh, our own goals that we reach you know we, we get a job we buy stuff we get loans pay off things resell things we live within the law it's hard for us to understand why Ted Bundy did what he did the only person who understands why Ted Bundy did what he did is Ted Bundy we can pretend we know but we don't and building more prisons and jails isn't going to prevent Ted Bundy's from getting out there on the street and Ted Bundy believe it or not didn't commit the crimes that he did because it was an easy access to assault weapons there's a lot of crime going on out there <clears throat> and we don't need to concentrate on just one we need to concentrate on all of them and there's no one fix for all of them and so when I when I talk about problems you have to look at it like this let's say you go to work and you get a call from your neighbor your dog is running around the neighborhood and you know your dog shouldn't be running around the neighborhood you got a fenced in yard so you're thinking I gotta go home and get this dog put him back in in the backyard boss says okay right, okay go ahead go ahead so you leave catch your dog you put him in the backyard next day same thing it just happens day after day the problem isn't the dog running away from your property something is causing that dog to run away so in order to fix this issue you need to discover the problem you over the weekend you're watching the dog the dog doesn't want to run away you're there so you know your presence doesn't cause the dog to run away you walk around the backyard you find a hole underneath the fence the dog dug a hole crawled underneath the fence and escaped from the backyard the problem is that hole the dog's ability to dig that hole so you can solve the issue by covering up the hole maybe putting some barbed wire across the bottom maybe getting an electric uh, fence and you go to work you don't get a call boss is happy you're happy problem solved it could be complicated could be simple but the problem isn't the dog and when you have high crime in a city and the jails are filling up the problem isn't overcrowded jails okay come on that's a dull moment the problem is crime what's causing the crime could be high taxes could be inflation it could be a massive influx of illegal drugs <clears throat> it could be um, the high price of gas or food the problems a lot of times figuring them out is very complicated and it can take years sometimes now on my you channel I have a little joke you know it's about a soapbox and these people spend a lot of time and, and money to try to figure out how to eliminate empty soap boxes being shipped out to the retailers and I think that's what's going on out here too you know the, the, the talk about mass shootings people figure that if the criminals you know I'm gonna keep this emphasize this I can't emphasize this enough the criminals are buying assault weapons and I'm not sure what an assault weapon is but we'll just that's what they call it these criminals are buying assault weapons and shooting up areas where there's a lot of people the malls grocery stores I mean years ago it was the post office okay now these criminals who for some reason will obey the law 
when need arises, you know, I want to go kill a whole bunch of people, but the law says I can't buy an assault weapon to do it, so I'm not going to do it. For some reason, these criminals fall in that category. But these criminals are going out and shooting a bunch of people. Their solution, get rid of the assault weapons. Okay. Let's say we do that. Let's say we ban all the assault weapons. Okay, now this criminal is sick of being bullied. Sick of people making fun of... Let's say he has this, this religion called uh, Boba. The Boba religion. And people are constantly criticizing him about his Boba religion. He's uh, forced to quit jobs because of the harassment. He has to uh, put on disguise when going to, to uh, public places. It's just miserable in his life. He just can't stand it. And he decides he's going to get revenge. In the state where he lives, he can't buy an AR-15, which he wants to use to go shoot up a mall. So he's not going to do it, right? He can't buy an assault weapon in that state, so he's not going to do it. Well, guess what? He's a criminal. And criminals are criminals because they don't follow the law. So this man who's got issues with the Boba harassment goes to the black market which is loaded with AR-15s. Says, I want to buy a couple of AR-15s and some ammunition. Here you go. And he shoots up them all. The issue isn't the assault weapon. Assault weapon cannot, and I'll emphasize that, cannot kill anyone. People kill. People pull the trigger. People buy the gun. People make the gun. People invent the gun is people. People kill people, not guns. But we've got to go out there to these public officials who say it is the assault weapon. Go ahead, ban them all. Guess what? People are still going to be shot. They're going to be stabbed. They're going to be blown up. They're going to be poisoned. This man is so angry at the people who harass him. He wants satisfaction and he doesn't care if he lives or dies everybody who gets into the mass shooting has a reason in their mind it may not be something that we agree with it may not some, be something that we could actually figure out without talking to the person but everybody has a motive and that motive isn't I can easily buy an assault weapon that's not <laughs> never the motive so Get that out of your mind. Don't think that buying an assault weapon is going to encourage a person to shoot up people. It's something else. And in this case, this person is being harassed. And that's wrong. I don't care what your religious belief is. I don't care what your political affiliation is. Killing a person because you're angry, because these people have been harassed, is wrong. And it's also wrong to harass and humiliate and to downgrade these people. I go on to social media and I see groups constantly criticize. I mean, that's all they do. Stupid, stupid, dumb, dumb, idiot. They just call people names. That's bullying to just sit around calling folks names. Nazi, fascist. That's, those are names that are are immediately associated with hate. Nobody likes a Nazi. I mean, there are pro-Nazi, neo-Nazi people out there. And they embrace that with all their heart and soul. But in general, people don't like Nazism or fascism. And so to label somebody as a Nazi who's not, you're just encouraging hate. You're trying to get people to go against these people. So if this person who has his unique religious belief suddenly becomes the object of all this ridicule on social media, uh, why wouldn't he want to kill somebody? Why wouldn't he want to take out revenge 
Why wouldn't he want to just feel that satisfaction? It's like, I got one on you. Yes, I'm dead, but I got one on you. Now, what if this person is just angry and someone sits down and says, what's going on? Why are you so upset? And opens up a dialogue, opens up some support, gets the community to stand together and help this person get through this bad time. I think that will prevent the person from obtaining an AR-15 because a law certainly won't. And then the person may calm down. And maybe the community will be uh, admonished. Shame on you for doing this. This person has a right to his religious belief. You have no right to criticize him. Now, people have a, have something against a certain group. Yeah, they can go out and say something, but don't don't harass a person. Don't commit a crime. And if the the society says we're going to lock you up if you keep harassing this person, then maybe that will work. Or maybe we have a get a group of people to get together and. And find out what is it about this person that makes you so angry that you have to break the law to prove your point. An open dialogue can solve so many issues. And um, if you're the head of a family, let's say you're the mother of a family, you're a single mother, or let's say you have a... uh, Standard family, you know, husband, wife, kids. Husband is making most of the decisions. And let's say he's sitting down and he's talking to his family. Or even the single mom is talking to her kids. You want to find out what's troubling the person. Kid is acting up in school. Why? A mom could find out that the kid is very upset about dad running away or dying or crying in the neighborhood and the mom could help resolve this and prevent a mass shooting in the future a mom could do that a nuclear family can do that a neighborhood churches community leaders support groups they can do that um, rehabilitation I know usually when I talk to people about it it doesn't really work anybody can play the game and get the certificate and walk away but still go back it's deeper than that that's not the problem the problem is the motivation what's motivating these people and if you're going to solve any conflict, any issue, anything that's out there, you got to properly identify the problem. Guns aren't the problem. Let social media say what it wants. People in general, you know, because there's people all over the world, they're not the problem. There's just that motivation. What's motivating these people? Is it an addiction? Is it revenge? Is it hate? Is it fear? And let's concentrate on that. Let's concentrate on the real problem. Quit making new laws. Quit building more prisons and jails. And quit hiring more police officers to patrol the neighborhoods when the issue is bigger and deeper and more complicated than it looks. We need to talk. We need to get out and communicate with our neighbors. We can reduce the prison population by understanding what's causing it. What is causing the rise in the prison population? Once we, once we figure that out, we can dedicate all our resources to handling that. And then we won't need a new jail 
We won't need a new prison. We won't need new prison people. It won't break my heart to find out a prison shut down because of lack of inmates, lack of staff, lack of need. There's just no need for the prison. I turn on the TV, watch the news, and hear prison shut down because there's <laughs> there's nobody in it. Yeah, I would go out and jump off a bridge after that. No. That's what I want to hear. And as a prison reformist, that's my goal. Get rid of the prisons. Well, I hope you go out, talk to your friends and family, open some communication. Let's prevent crime. Let's reduce the prison population and definitely let's cut back on recidivism. We don't need people going back to prison. Go out and have yourself a wonderful day and make beautiful memories for tomorrow.